Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. This is going to be a hodgepodge. This is going to be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Lots of things going on. And in the background, there's thunder, there's lightning, and there's Zeke and Sassy panting. Yes, pure excitement <laughs> around here. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't need this type of excitement. As you see, Russia is deploying nuclear-capable capable bombers to Syria for training. So three of them are in en route and going to be deployed. Just training, or is it some sort of escalation? I'll leave it up to you guys. By the way, there's a mysterious air base that's being built on a volcanic island off of Yemen that nobody really took responsibility for. Wow, that sounds exciting. Immediately what comes into my mind is like, I want to remote view it. We could do that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we could definitely do that. Sounds like fun. Do you feel like you're up to it right now? Not at the moment, no. Okay. No, it's been a long day working on... Love you guys, but it's been a long day working on all of you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, pack, a busy pack day. So officials from Yemen say that this, they feel, is basically the UAE, United Arab Emirates. Uh, this would be very strategic. The runway on this island, Mayan Island, allows whoever controls it to project power into the strait and easily launch airstrikes into mainland Yemen, which has been in, you know, basically perpetual warfare, it seems, forever. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of positioning of chess pieces, so yes. to speak. As you know, chess is something that I love and have loved yeah, since I was a little kid. My uncle taught me when I was about 10 years old. Chinese banks buy dollars to weaken the yuan in latest intervention. And that might seem counterintuitive, but it the weakness of the dollar and the strength of the yuan, they're going in different directions. So it's actually making it so that Chinese goods are getting to be non-competitive, too expensive. Interesting. Yes. How things have changed from, well, like my youth, uh, when we'd always say, ah, made in China, and, and you know, always look at it like, well, it's going to be cheap, but it's not necessarily going to be good. Uh, well, things have totally changed, and we've talked about that power shifting over that way. And you could see in the diagrams here that things are heading in different directions. This is part of the big change, the big shift, the big shift of power heading over to China, heading eastward. Uh, Amazon, by the way, is being sued by the DC. DC, the Attorney General for Washington, DC, accusing Amazon of engaging in anti-competitive practices that have raised prices for US consumers. Undoubtedly, you know, as we see Bezos with the biggest yacht imaginable out there, and you know, there was briefly a new world's richest man, but according to sources, Bezos is back on top. We need more than that. We need more than that. When you have six companies that control the media, there's something seriously wrong here. And talk about different parts of the country going into different directions completely, completely, absolutely, diametrically opposed. Texas is poised to allow unlicensed carrying of guns with no background checks. And, you know, I, I won't say anything about it other than that, except for saying that Again, can't you see that things are going, well, it's like two trains that might have had their butts together and now they're just speeding off in totally different directions. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any way, I'll, I would lay money that this country, well, definitely by 2030, will not be together as 50 states or 51 if they want to make DC a state. Uh, I think the breakup is inevitable, and I'm thinking more like 2020. Well, Cindy told me the guy said 2023 it begins. Uh, you can see it's beginning now, but as far as the legislation to go ahead, Texas job loss in the plague upon the land is less than the nation and less than other large states in the U.S. They've added about a million jobs the past 12 months, and the Dallas Federal Reserve says we should add about another 800,000 more this, this year. As people are moving to Texas in droves, and they're also moving to Florida in droves. 
and moving out of certain other areas. Boy, there's a migration going on. Big time migration. So we see this train flipped as tornado hits Kansas town. Tornado touchdown in Selden, Kansas, destroying multiple structures, tipping over a train, but believe it or not, only one injury reported. So yeah, that itself was a, a blessing. And as you see here, they're doing damage assessments. Well, the only injured person was a firefighter that suffered minor injuries when a utility pole crashed into the back window of his truck. But it did uproot trees. Uh, it, it made a mess of things. It's been a crazy, crazy year as we listen to the rainfall. But we're, we're glad that there's no tornado warnings. I think this is the first time we haven't had tornado warnings or watches with the thunderstorms. Yeah. So this is interesting. Electromagnetic anomalies occur before large earthquakes. Does not surprise me at all. Again, we live in an electromagnetic multiverse. Mm -hmm. So that's not surprising. No, it's not. Not at all. This new study published in Earth, Plants, and Space sheds new light on the electromagnetic anomalies occurring before large quakes. The research supports the hypothesis that fault rupture progresses just before an earthquake and the invading gas is charged and it forms a large current causing various electromagnetic anomalies. Well, we've seen that often that you get lightning strikes right at the cone of the volcano as it's going off. We've also seen a lot of well, I guess the, the right term to use now is UAPs, hmm. unidentified aerial phenomenon. Right. Yeah, we, we used to call those UFOs. Many UFOs sighted at major eruptions as well, as it seems like they monitor or do they start? Uh, do they, what would you sure. say, a little artificial <laughs> uh, insemination of eruptions, yeah, yeah. so to speak? Intense hazardous dust storm blankets South Australia. Yeah, it's been one thing after another. Health alert has been issued for the state. People with breathing problems advised to stay indoors. It began on Monday and it's going to continue into Tuesday as well. You know, every, everywhere we look across the globe, we're seeing like just these apocalyptical events. Multiple earth directed CMEs were produced over the weekend. Remember when we read that before? The initial report was, it didn't seem likely that any were Earth directed. And then we get, well, may, there, there's a chance that one of them might have been Earth directed. Now we see, yes, multiple Earth directed CMEs. And we were just talking amongst ourselves with one of our family members about, the, again, about the technology that advanced beings would have. and. The family member had said, well, yeah, when you saw that series of these flares going off, it's almost like somebody was pointing something energetically towards it that just triggered it. And I wouldn't doubt that for a second. No, me neither. I don't know. You know, think about it again. Think about the technology that uh, extraterrestrials would have if they were, again, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions of years ahead of us. Solar activity has increased from low to moderate levels on Saturday and Sunday, the 22nd, 23rd, with a series of C and M class solar flares that produced by Active Region 2824. Multiple CMEs were produced during the period. Several have Earth directed components. So, consolidated WSA Enlil. Enlil. There you have it. It's Enlil again, right? And I had mentioned before that I had made the connection that L, the Canaanite god, always felt like it could be Enlil to me. And some of you out there said you came to that same conclusion as well. So moderate geomagnetic storm watch is in effect, be aware, guys. Uh, the guides have been telling us, we got, what do you think, about another seven to ten days, maybe two weeks? Yeah. Be yeah. Be before we could see some serious, major, major disruption. Yeah, we don't want that because I don't want to see people hurt. So I really would implore you guys to put out your intentions that things go soft. Whatever it is, integrate itself soft so that the population, the major population, is not damaged. Most definitely. And, and, and do again whatever preps you have to do. And I think the best thing you can do is have that daily spiritual practice as well. 
significant damage after a 5.3 quake near Iria Congo. This is the one over in the Congo that's been going crazy. So a 5.3 hit uh, Rubavu in Rwanda as we see the area getting these blasts. This, this got me thinking, just like we were talking about the mud flood timelines, they say Africa is going to split. And, you know, the Kenyan Rift area, when you see activity like this, well, what if things, you know, aren't going to take a million years, like the scientists say? Oh, Africa's going to split, but it's going to be a million years. What if it's not? I mean, what if it's something that happens in 100 years or 50 years? Um, when you see what's going on right now, it's definitely very curious. So let's, again, send our prayers and positive intentions over there to the people that are going through that. And by the way, lava overtake, overtakes an artificial dam near Cindy's favorite word. Pragadasapa. Got it. She's amazing. Nailed it. I think you should be an uh, interpreter in the UN. Yeah, I should. I should. You're right. Except for, you know, we, I don't think we'd want to work for one of those organizations. <laughs> so, yeah, this, this is in Iceland, and it's made it past, and it's heading into the valley. This isn't slowing down, guys. And uh, actually, it doesn't seem like anything is slowing down right now. What's interesting, too, is just seeing a lot of these things come out. Like, you know, humans should be able to live to 150. When scientists now are looking deeper and they're discovering, you know, in reality, people should live to 120 to 150 on a regular basis. Why don't we? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, depending on what sources you're looking at, one of the things I'd bring up is look at the second or third leading cause of death. And that might give you a clue. So, by the way, they made an iPhone app that accurate, accurately estimates biological aging. Discovered that life expectancy has the capacity to be almost double the current norm. Fly, the findings are based on blood samples from hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. and the U.K. Now, what is it about? It's about cell senescence. Aging in humans exhibits universal features common to complex systems operating on the brink of disintegration. This work is a demonstration of how concepts borrowed from physical scientists can be used in biology to probe different aspects of senescence and frailty. So when we talk about that, what does that mean? It means that cells become what they call zombie cells eventually. They stop splitting. They stop you know, doing cellular mitosis and reproducing. And often, too, the chances of cancer cells go up. And that would be reproducing in the wrong way. So when you have these senescent cells, and they're going to talk about different therapies, elixirs of life, they always want to get you to go down a certain, you know, a certain route. Talk about CRISPR technology, things along those lines. They might even talk about, hey, we got a cute rat here. His name is Ralph. We could grow you a new pancreas. Yep. Um, but what can we do naturally? Well, in the past, humans didn't always eat every single day. Some days we didn't eat. And you know what? That was actually good for us. Fasting. Fasting has been shown to regulate stem cell populations. You know, you're still making stem cells. Even, if, even at an adult age, you're still making stem cells. This can help reverse cell senescence and impact regeneration. Can also reduce damage to bone marrow stem cells protect against chemotoxicity. Fasting also promotes autophagy. This is the process of cellular turnover, breaking down worn cells and proteins back into energy. And so, you know, this is just one of the most simple keys. And as, as we are talking, it's now basically about six o'clock and I haven't eaten since last night at about the same time. So I've gotten very used to one meal a day, and then if I have dessert, it's probably Greek yogurt with some berries or something like that, um, typically. All right, last night, I'll admit to you guys, there's Cherry Garcia in the fridge. I had one tablespoon. That was it. I had a little craving, went and took one tablespoon, and that actually satisfied the craving. Um, 
and I'm not saying that everybody needs to do these things, but studies show how do you increase about seven years on average to your lifespan? You basically under eat. We, we don't need as many calories as we think. We need more nutrition. Nutrition. And so many people are basically starving nutritionally, even though they might be getting in excess calories. That The more calories we take in, the more food we process, the quicker we age in many ways. And that's been shown by study after study. Your body's metabolism will adjust to a lower rate. So if, if you were taking in 2,000 calories and you go down to 14, 1,600, your body will adjust and your weight will stabilize. And you'll actually live a longer life as long as you're taking in things that are nutritionally dense. You know, whole foods, veggies. Veggies should be the first thing at the top of the list. And again, organic, non-modified, non-sprayed with toxic things. Uh, but also fruits as well. And then other wholesome foods, again, watch out for those GMOs snuck in different places. And watch out, up for, watch out for the Roundup, you know, and all the other chemicals that they are hitting us with constantly, which is causing us to be in a, a constant need for a constant detox. Yep. We were talking today about uh, doing coffee enemas with a family member uh, that was in need of a liver cleanse. Uh, and that's a powerful tool. And of course, organic coffee and distilled water. Um, there's just milk thistle is great for your liver too. Dandelion, it goes on and on. There's natural alternatives. But one of the things that we could do that's so easy is intermittent fasting, which is not hard. And it can be challenged, challenging to do a three to five day water fast for sure. Just water, herbal teas, maybe a little black coffee. Um, but it's, it's not hard to say, start out by just eating in an eight hour window. Like maybe you eat at 12 and then you make sure that you're all done eating by eight. Whittle it down to a six hour window, 12 and six perhaps. And then maybe even whittle it down to a four hour window. Cause then your body has more time to get rid of the toxic things that are building up that will eventually over time cause things like cancer. Yeah, it's very true. You know, these things, they're, they're kind of difficult to get out there into the mainstream because these are answers to things, to health issues that are really, really important. You know, we really need to take a look at alternative methods of healing. You know, when I was younger, I got, uh, the doctors got a hold of me when I was very young. And I was taught, well, you need to do what the doctor says. And you have to do it exactly as he says. Nothing any different. And I wasn't aware of any alternative healing. So if you guys are, you know, full of doctor's appointments and going here and going there and getting this and that um, written out to you, just start looking for alternative methods. Looking, look for alternative methods. There's an alternative method to everything out there. And it's you're better off for it. Yes. So we want to thank you guys for being part of the family. Make sure you are subscribed and have the bell click for notifications. Thank you so much for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. If you found this interesting, give it a thumbs up. That should help the algorithm. So that, you know we know we know the bigger picture. And if you guys need to make an appointment with us, it's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail.com. As always, be prepared. God bless and namaste. namaste.